Hi everyone, it's Plastic EP coming from Melbourne, Australia, and I just want to tell you, not that it matters, it's 3 a.m. here. Now, only Nigel Pearce now at the moment can get me out of my bed, right? He said, let's do a very special Beatles show, and I said, okay. Tell them whatever you want to tell them, Nigel. Thank you, Plastic. Well, I'm awfully sorry that I'm keeping you from your beauty sleep, because I would never do that intentionally, but uh, knowing that uh, your links to Beatle people of which you've brought us all together and uh, done a great job with sterling service. Um, Got to say congratulations, first of all, to your thousandth video show. And I think that's a tumultuous achievement. You've worked hard at it in the time that I've known you. And uh, with all the stars, you know, that you've had linked to the Beatles and other people, um, you've done a great job. So I raise my hat my uh, heart and my head to you. Well done, Plastic. Pop of the tree. Coming from you, Nigel, it means a lot. And I just want to say something, right? Because you're in the UK. And because I'm hitting my thousand show, and after this one, there's only uh, eight to go, which is no big deal. But I've got a relative in the UK, and in celebration of the thousand show, you know I collect... Hard Rock, T-shirt, extra large, all over the world. And I wear them every day. I have about 50 of them. And these just came in from the UK right today in my mail. You can see that. It's even got the, price. It's even got the price on it, £33. That's one of them. Right? Hang on. This is the second one, and I'll be wearing them from tomorrow. Because it's only 3 a.m. here. I don't sleep in them. I actually wear these, okay? So there's the second one. How great's that? Beautiful. And just to show you, because this is the proof. <coughs> so here's the tag. It's just coming yep. by mail, right? And Beautiful. Hard Rock are going to love this. <coughs> What's that? It's got the pounds there, 33 pounds. Yep. So there's like 66 pounds worth of two uh <coughs> two t-shirts, all right? I love yep. the hard well done, plastic. Okay. You deserve it, mate. All right. Now, the reason that um I thought we'd do a special show, yes, it's Beatles related, and it's something that has if I said miss the mark, that doesn't mean it's inferior. It just means that it's been missed by a majority of the fans. And I think that uh, you've got a couple of albums I know, which are very rare and we'll discuss. But this package I don't think was available in Australia. Uh, I may be proved wrong because the pat the uh, like sales marketing was very patchy and it slipped under the the bench, it sort of slipped out of sight very quickly. And the one I'm talking about is this one. Yeah, well, I see, if I said that for sale in Australia, I'll know it was released here. But it's obviously made in the UK because that's the only way it can be manufactured. Well, it was at the time. It came out in 1982. Now, I'll stand back, put it back so you can see the entire cover. It's beautiful. Now, I that- can see it. That's the front cover. Yeah. And the back was virtually the same. Okay. All right. And it was called, from Liverpool, the Beatles box. So it was in a facsimile wooden case. Now, as you opened it up, first of all, you got a listing on the inside. Yep. Of the lid. Yep. Okay. Now, it was an eight-album set right. done through EMI Records, uh, Reader's Digest, and the World Books, and EMI. Now, it cost at the time, if I remember rightly, because I bought mine when it came out, I think it cost about £28 which is not even the price of one of your T-shirts now. Uh, 
And I don't think it sold all that well because in those days, £28 was an awful lot of money. However, it has now become very in demand from true Beatles fans because of the packaging, the content, and there are some mysteries within the package. And as you know, John Lennon had been shot by then. The Beatles uh, apple was close uh, to, uh, you know, non-existent because it was no longer part of EMI because of the contract situation. And I know that EMI were fearful of various legal situations that were happening. So the fact that this ever came out at all was a, a huge piece of inspirational bargaining by either EMI, Reader's Digest, um, to get to it. But let's get to the goodies. Here is the first album. Now look at that packaging. It looks unbelievable. It's like undoing a Christmas present. Exactly. Let's go through every cover, and then you can tell them the secrets that are within the box set. That's, That's one. one. You have to excuse me. It's been a long time since I've got no, them out. That's all right. We're happy you got them out. That's number two. Great. Just keep them flying. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That's great. So if I find a set, I should buy it straight away, right? Yes. Okay. Number four. Yep, number five. Nice covers. Number six. It was rumoured that they owned a balloon factory. Do you know that? When they did that uh, All You Need Is Love concert. Have you heard that rumour? That the Beatles owned a I've balloon heard. company? I don't quite think so, but I've heard the rumour. Okay, that's fine. And I want to say hello to everybody out there in uh, Beatle Week there in Liverpool. They're all there. Number eight. Now, that's the albums. And then you've got a guarantee. Yeah. Now, I'm glad it yeah. says world records because when you finish, I'll tell you something. Okay, go on. And then you got... The advertising blurb, and there yeah, it's uh, right on the front. Look, that's great, great pictures of them. That's great art. Now, in the way that they did in those days, even the advertising was superb. Yeah, you know, full sort of poster size. I agree. And you can see a lovely picture there of Diana Ross. Yep, yeah. and the and then and Archer and everybody else that was on their sort of listed roster. So that's the, shall we say, the packaging. Now, if you don't mind for a second, I'll turn the albums over. Sure. Because um, they have, I don't very often get them out because of what's happened recently. So I'll put them back in order. Sure. Now, I just want to ask you, the crux of the matter, and I want you to say it is, that there's rare Beatle tracks on there, and the Beatles realised later after it was released that these rare tracks are on this box set. Now, explain that. Well, this was, a, as I was saying before we opened the box, because of the contract situation, and I think uh, the aftermath of John being shot, and all the legal legalities that were in fear of going round, I don't think that the Beatles had control as much as they wished. And uh, although they were released by Parlophone, because they had a Parlophone stamp on them, uh, whoever selected the recordings 
managed to get a fair number of different tracks from the released singles because this was supposed to be a Beatles greatest hits box. Now, as I open the packaging, there it is. And it was standard at the time EMI Parlophone packaging. Yep. So there was no difference from a standard Parlophone album. Now, the only thing that you had was, please, if I can, I don't want to mark the record. Yeah, sure. On the one there, yep. you've got two lines that says this compilation. 1980 World Records Limited. That's it. So there you go. There's your packaging. And there is your first album. Now, as I say, I'm not trying to block out the camera. That's all. Um, there were differences. Now, the first one starts at track one. Love Me Do is track one. And it is the track at the sessions that Ringo Starr drummed on, not Alan White. So it was the alternate take that made yeah. it to this. Right. Now, that's side one. So you've got a, a genuine big difference on track one. Now, as you go down to side two, we come to track six. All my loving. We've got the counting one, two, three, four, plus the hi hat timing beat. Yeah, I Who heard that. Know? So that's track six already on the first album. You've got two major differences. Now, the second one, also one here, is Thank You Girl, maybe come to your harmonica bit. That there doesn't have the harmonica on it. You just have John and Paul saying, oh, 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 the harmonica at the beginning is not there. So it obviously proves that another alternate version was plundered from the archives or that a completed version was done with the possibility of being released because the B-side from me to you had very powerful at the beginning harmonica. So there's your, um, shall we say, first differences on there. Now you come to the second album, beautiful coverage, beautiful cover. And you've got this boy, track two, and it's True Stereo. Now True Stereo for this boy still isn't available as a release in England. But here it is. It's on this album. Now, then you go to the next major difference. A Hard Day's Night. Although it's uh, stereo, it's only mono. So somebody goofed somewhere along the line. So they really so, released alternate tracks throughout the whole box. It looks, it looks like it. And to finish this side off, and I love her, which was the song that's used in the film A Hard Day's Night, it's got six bars of extra music on it, rather than the single that we all know and love. So uh, you've got more music on there. So here you are, you've really got, you know, some major differences already. Now, there's the third album, which was obviously a picture from Help. And note the packaging. I just think the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Totally great. Now, on the third album, the major difference we've got is I Feel Fine. Now, um, on I Feel Fine, as you know, yep. You have a lovely guitar feedback. But on the version on here, you've got, you can hear John and Paul whispering to each other. And somebody must have says to somebody, don't forget, don't take it over. So they were working to try and construct this sound 
Um, and it wasn't by accident. They were working towards it. So I think, you know, that is uh, very, very good. A little piece. And the other thing was the next one on here as well. She's a woman. It's a different take from the released one. And it's in true stereo. So you've got some real differences, uh, you know, coming up to eight differences already. Now, the next one, these are basically straight as they should be. Yep. Okay. And the same with this one. Until you come to the very last two tracks. Yep. You get Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields. Now, as you know, Plastic, the first release of the single was a double A side. That's right. Strawberry, Strawberry Fields was on the top with Penny Lane on the flip, although it was a double A side. Here, they're reversed. Penny Lane comes first and Strawberry Fields comes after. So there's the first difference. Or was it done in rotation? Was it agreed? You never know. But secondly, Strawberry Fields Forever is the single take on the uh, track there on the album. And that's in true stereo. Not in stereo monophonic, which is the produced stereo with splitting it either sides. So where do they get the stereo mix from? That's the next question. Now, um, hold on. I've got to go back to this one. Yes, let me go to the next one. Let me get it right in a minute. Hold on. Yes. Now, on this one also, the version of I'm Only Sleeping is a little bit slower and it's got a different guitar bit in the middle. So the middle eight that we all know and love from Harrison is slightly different on this version, which there again shows was there another version or was this a first version? And then when they played this version, didn't like it, substitute another guitar middle eight. Nobody knows. But it's on here. So then you come to All You Need Is Love and uh, Baby You're a Rich Man. Now, again, before they ever came out, you've got them both in true stereo. So, again, they understand that the mixes come from Germany on that one. So now the other one, of course, the last one on here, which is I Am The Walrus. It's the American version from their version of Rarities with a different ending. So you can see you've got some pretty substantial differences. Now, then you come to this one, which was this one here, number seven. You've got the continuing story of Bungalow Bill from the White Album. And there's no Spanish guitar at the beginning. You go straight into the song. So where's the Spanish guitar? First question. Secondly, across the universe, which appears on this album, is yet another version that isn't the single or isn't on the Phil Spector Let It Be. So there's the third version. They call it the second version, but it's the third version that was released of Across the Universe. Uh, that's okay, uh, something else that's different. But I can tell you, as I said to you before, Plastic, I've got seven versions of Across the Universe, and I would think the best one is the one that I've got with beautiful Indian instruments on it, sitar and tablas and everything. It's absolutely wonderful. And of course, right at the end, you have the closing medley from Abbey Road. Golden Slumbers carry that weight, the end, Her Majesty. Well, as you know, on Abbey Road, when they finish the bit with the end, there is a 16 second gap between the end of the end and the short little Her Majesty. On this album, it's down to five seconds. So again, is that another mix? Is that another version? Or did they just stop the tape and chop, chop it? Because if they did, and then you have a situation where 
somebody unauthorized has edited a Beatles recording. So all in all, you've got 17 major differences between on that album, plus you've got also Forget Back, which is supposed to be a sort of like greatest hits. It's the version from Let It Be on the Roof. So you haven't got the ending after the get back, ooh, and the fade out. So all in all, it would make, I think, a very, very good alternate album. And lo and behold, there it is. That just came today to you, yeah? It did indeed. And I'm saying that's the, all the albums are in there. Is that right? No, all the difference in tracks, the 17 oh, tracks. That's better. So I've got the album. That's amazing. Now look. There's the front of the box. Yeah. There's the CD. Amazing. Now, I know you've gone through all the albums, but all the tracks, the rare ones are there. Can you just read them out? Just read them out one after the other for everyone as a refresher. Yeah, so, of course I will. Now just give me a second because I'm putting yep. the CD back in the case. Yep. Because what we're going to do now is to put this CD into the box. Okay. Now here's the running order of the CD, and I also show you, look. Yeah, it's right. a pile of fun release, Reader's Digest. Yep. Okay. Here am I. Yep. Okay, and world records on the bottom. Now, look. But I'm saying, can anyone just buy that one on its own? I don't know. Okay, I don't fine. know plastic, right. but I'm very pleased to have got that, and that gives it another rarity. Yeah, of course. Now, uh, here are the tracks in order. Yep. Love Me Do, All My Loving, Thank You Girl, This Boy, a Hard Day's Night, and I Love Her, I Feel Fine, She's a Woman, Track 9, Strawberry Fields Forever, Track 10, Penny Lane, and then the odd one, Track 11, they go back to 1966, I'm Only Sleeping, Track 12, All You Need Is Love, Track 13 is Baby You're a Rich Man, 14 is I Am the Walrus, 15 is the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. 16 is Across the Universe. And 17, Carry That Weight, Golden Slumbers, The End, Her Majesty, with the shortened ending. But also, you see here, they haven't been uh, careful because the shortened version of Get Back doesn't make that album. So the situation is, for all the Beatle fans out there, of which you are a catalyst for pulling us all together, um, including all those at Beatle Week in Liverpool. Hi, David. Great to see you. Look forward to conversing with you next week, as we will be. And everybody else, I just wish I could be there. Remember what I said to you, Plastic? It cost about £28 to purchase the box set now if you want to purchase one it's going nearly at 400 pounds its value has shot up over the last month something terrific and i do put it down to the fact that people have suddenly latched on to these differences because it gives people an alternate take to those 17 tracks and the fact that i've got that cd just goes to show that it makes an absolutely fantastic album. Yeah, but I never heard of that until you told me. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to show you something very rare that I doubt people have got that I picked up. Now, you talk about the World Record Club. Look at this. This is from Australia, okay? Now, I don't think yep. anybody's seen that, and the name's there on there. I'm going to take my glasses off. You can't see me anyway, but it says... In tribute to Brian Epstein, right? That's what it says at the back. But what it says is, it's got a name, the production, and it says 
that it's through the World Record Club. It gives the address here of Flinders Street, Melbourne, right? And it's got yep. the World Record Club uh, emblem. I've done that on purpose in tribute to Brian Epstein. If you read this paragraph here, can you read that? Just about. But you tell us what it says, my friend. The bottom one. Got... Okay. I'll try and read it to you, okay? It says, that last paragraph, right? A filmer, I think it's Bartley Production, released exclusively in Australia by World Record Club, and it says an address... 299 Flinders Lane, Melbourne, I think it is, and 177 Elizabeth Street, Sydney, right? Newspaper house in Brisbane and another address in Adelaide and another address in Perth. So this was distributed throughout Australia and as far as I know, it's made here as well. I'm just so you've gonna... got a real jet. I'm going to pull out the label. As I said, I don't think anyone's seen it. And when I saw it, I've only seen it once in my life. So. Superb. I just want to see where it's manufactured. I'll just have a look for you. Hang on. You've got I've got to you've say got to... also it's in mint condition, which is the other thing. So I'll try and read you the label if I can. And it's got the emblem there. I'm just having a look. It says Northern Songs on it. Yep. It says Orchestral Ensemble. And on the outside, it's got, uh, well, on the inside... I'm just looking to see what this is manufactured. It's actually too small for me to see, right? Unfortunately. But if you can see on the outside of that label there where it's made, that will be great. Can you see that or not? I'm, I'm getting a record at the moment, nothing else. Okay. Well, where it says World Stereo, with those little black lines going on the inside, on the outside, sorry, there's uh, green writing written on the on the uh, white space between the label and those black lines that are going outward. But it says Northern Songs. I can't say more than that. No, it is. I tell you what, Plastic, you have got a real rare one there. And uh, you should hold on to it and look after it. Well, as I said, it was here in Australia. So my guess is it's... Definitely manufactured in Australia when it's coming out from every state from that yes. world record club. So I think that's a given. Now, the second record I got right, the reason why I bought it is, I don't know if you know that, but when they were doing help, it's like on the Odeon label, right? The figure said, yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie was going to be called, I think, yeah, 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 eight arms to hold you, right? Something like that. And that's why it's got yeah, yeah, yeah there. And that's the album from the film, which people can appreciate. They've got an album out of the film. Right. I'll just well, show you the label. And then that's uh, that one's done too. This is, uh, this is very heavy vinyl and very good plastic. Uh, covers there. So what you see? It's like driving a car. Hang on. I know you can't see a thing. <laughs> Have a good look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, if you can read where it's manufactured, you'd be doing me a favour. Well, I can tell you where that's manufactured. It's in Germany. And Germany. Yeah. Germany that's and my Holland. guess. Yeah. It's my guess. All now, right. Let me, let me explain a little bit. Because when the Beatles broke. They came to um, EMI Records through Parlophone. There wasn't a licensing deal done for Europe. So therefore, Europe had Odeon, which was part of Polydor. And they did a licensing agreement 
for the mainland of Europe, which is why a lot of the Beatles stuff, and it still does, even for um, vinyl, comes out on the Odeon label. Now, I have some Odeon albums. I've got five, I think. But the one you've got there, which again, with the cover packaging, if you show everybody, because that's completely different to the UK. Now, first of all, if you hold it up plastic. This is thick now the plastic app- in here. I know, but I also want to yeah. show you how it's come too. That's a difference in there. That's a heavy yeah. duty. Yeah. If you show us the jacket, the, the, the actual jacket that's on the, you know, the, the cover. Right. Now, just hold it like that. First of all, where it's red there in England, it's blue. The photographs are the same. Uh, We've got a hard day's night. And uh, we have, obviously, instead of Odeon, we have Parlophone. But if then, if you turn it over, turn it round, show us the back, the four photographs at the bottom are different. We have photographs in England, one of John, which is the most different, which is where he's... um, Remember that hat you had, or have, sorry, is a picture of him wearing that. Now, the writing, I can see from here, the actual liner notes, they are the same. Okay. And they, were, and they were actually put together by Tony Barrow. So you've got an album there, which is completely different. And uh, again, it's another rare one. Now, because of the situation, as we have discussed before, especially with the Beatles, because you're with the Beatles, got a different cover to the to the UK one, and I understand that John Lennon was quite unhappy with it. But uh, there's one more very- album I've got to show you. I'm just going to lean across. I've been told that this is very hard to get. It is now. I've got a copy. I've got a copy. The design was done by a group called Shoot That Tiger. And that was the original design. Yes, the front. The original yeah, design was going to be used for the Now White album. That's true. That's what I've they, heard that. that. Now, that album now is quite hard to get a hold of. Now, is that on Parlophone or is that on Odeon? It's on EMI. Well, just check to see if it's on Parlophone. It says EMI in the corner. I'm going to show you the... Uh, Really, hang on a second. Let's see this proper. Hang on. I'm going to actually show you the inside of the uh, record as well. But you can see there. I've got the same one in England. Yes, it's the inside. It's the actual record of which label it's on. Yeah, but you see it says EMI in the corner down at bottom. Yes, but Odeon now and there may be part of EMI, you see. Oh, let's have a look. But that's another rare one. Lucky I bought it. Because I haven't yep. seen it since. I've not seen it since I bought this. And well, then I looked that. that up on the net and it said what you actually said about it being the cover of the White Album. Now, can you imagine that as the White Album instead of a Not really. Ah, now see, so you've got, ah, you got Parlophone now. Yeah, but that must be Australia, made in Australia. What's it say at the bottom? Yes. I can't read it. It's Australian, but what I'm saying to you is, what I'm saying to you is, Plastic, is that the difference had been centralised. Instead of it being on Odeon, like a hard day's night, it's now on Parlophone. So therefore, they they had centralised the production and the catalogue. So yes, you've got a very, very rare album now. You've got two there, three really, because I've never seen the Brian Epstein one, so thanks for showing that. And the Hard Day's Night, we've discussed the differences. And then you've got that one. So, well done, Plastic. You've got, but I also uh, got to say, there's three. another album that I've got too, Nigel, right, which has the Magical Mystery Tour, the four faces, right, after they just did the uh, I Am The Walrus. And it's, it's a world record club release too. Well, you want to keep them. They're yeah, but have you seen on. that one, the one I'm talking about? No, there's always next time. There's always next time, my friend, because uh, I've got a lot we can do through some more 
rare ones and go through it as well. But um, no, you've got some real great stuff there. And it just goes to show that the Australian market was treated as a completely separate entity from the UK market, despite the historical links. It was still treated as um, a completely different uh, setup. Exactly. But because I just want to say we copied, we copied the Great Britain releases. And I want to thank you so much, Nigel, for being on this special. It was fantastic. Great to be here. And once again, congratulations on your thousandth show. I'm looking forward to be part of it. And uh, any eight to go is going to go just like that. Plastic. Thank you, Nigel. Yes.